I'm Noah Drum. And I'm Zach Hall. And we are the Geeks That Speak. This is the podcast where we nerd out about pretty much any pop culture. From video games, Star Wars, and zombies. To music, movies, and comics. You just never know where the combo will go on on Geek Speak. Hello, and welcome back to the Geek Speak podcast. I'm Noah Drum. And I'm Zach Hall. And we are your co-hosts. And on this week's episode... We are going to be talking about the newest episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Episode 2. The Star-Spangled Man. I was just about to ask what it was called. Yeah, I know. That's why I <laughs> but, said it. Um, but, but before we get into that, dude. dude. Spoiler alert. Not Yes, yes. First of all, spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the episode, what are you doing here? Go watch it. Yeah, like, literally, pause this. Go watch the episode right now, or you're grounded. Right now. We're going to tell your mom. But, no, that's not what I'm talking about. If you want to kindly direct your attention behind us, we, we've we done have... a little bit of updating. When he says we, he means him. <laughs> he did He did the, re- the renovation. The renovation, yes. But, uh, yeah, now we have Spongebob and Gary and the pineapple. And we have all, all of my Deadpools, all of my lovely Deadpools. And my Spongebob characters and Steve and Rubik's Cube. Till our pops come in, you know, we're going to get some more pops in here. Hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want the lamp? I want dish. You want the lamp? That's, that's dope as fuck. That's dope as fuck, do, 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 guys. Do, 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 do. Wait, honestly, I'm jealous. I don't know where he got it, but I want one. <laughs> From the Syracuse Mall. But yes, so hopefully we can continue to try and make it look better behind us. Get Indeed. some cooler things like, don't you have some Yoda Star Wars pops coming? I have, I have a, I have a baby Yoda bobblehead pop, and then I have a ten foot Mandalorian with the child. Um, nice. And um, I definitely wouldn't mind using it as background decoration, guys. Guys, I know you're gonna yell at me, okay? This is a pop. It's also a bobblehead. All right, but I got him for Christmas for Black Friday, and literally when I opened him, the box was already fucked up. So I was like, you know what? I might as well take him out anyway. It's already fucked up. Otherwise, yeah. I would not have opened him. I didn't open the other two pops. So please don't yell at me. I know. I'm a bad nerd. I'm sorry. But uh, let's get right ahead with the episode, shall we? Yes. All right. Wow. Um, where to begin? Um, okay, first of all, I know where to begin. Here is a little Easter egg that I want to tell you, because I know how much of a Star Wars fan you are, okay? Now, at the end of the episode, we got to see Zemo. We got to see him through that little security camera, right? Yeah. And if you look on that security camera, he's actually being held in cell 2187. Oh, which is the same cell that Princess Leia was held in on the Death Star. Yeah. Yes. And uh, and another 2187 reference, uh, the character Finn from the sequel trilogy, his Stormtrooper number was FN2187. Yep, yep. So, I also saw I saw that in a video on YouTube. I can't um, remember which one. It, I... Uh, at when I first, saw this in the comments on a YouTube video, and I was like, oh my god, Zach is going to want to know that. Um... When you the second you said that about the cell number, I'm like, oh wait, yeah, Eric Eric Voss from New Rockstars mentioned that, and I'm like, oh, that's the Star Wars Easter egg. We just like live on his YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, New Rockstars is kind of it's kind of dope, kind of goaded. But um, but so I I have a question about that little Easter egg. Do you think that that's just Disney promoting its other brands like Star Wars in? Marvel, or do you think that's Kevin Feige being a super nerd because he loves Star Wars? Honestly, since you say that, it could be a form of promotion, but I could just see it being an Easter egg reference. Uh, able to. Shut up. Um, I could see it just being an Easter egg reference because Disney owns Star Wars, so, you know? Right. Like, right. like let's make a callback. Uh, and, um... The first Ant Man. Uh, I forget what was shooting, uh, but whatever the shooting, whatever the thing that was shooting, it sounded like a Tie Fighter, and then that whole, um, and then that whole reference in Civil War when Peter is rapping 
around Ant Man. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, yeah, remember that old, very old movie, Empire Strikes Back, when they were rapping. Do you know, remember the with the walkie thingy? With the walkie thingy. Uh, <laughs> I love Tom um, Island. Fucking um, and, but then it could. Uh, now this is why I can see it being promotion. Kevin Feige is rumored to be working on a Star Wars project. So that could be like, oh hey, oh shit, dude, you I didn't this know one that. Thing? Yeah, no, it's we don't know. Are if you it's trying true. to say that he's going to bring Star Wars into the MCU? I hope not. That would be kind of it cool. like be, if we if we got like a background cameo in Guardians of the Galaxy somewhere. It would be a dope as like, it'd be a dope as crossover, but like. Not like I know, do something crossover. subtle. Do, yeah, like, yeah. maybe, like, in Guardians 3, maybe have, like, an outline of a familiar ship from Star Wars Dude, flying in the background. Dude, like in maybe Guardians the 3, Falcon. one of the Ravengers, there should be a midget Ravenger that just is wearing Yoda's cloak. <laughs> so, something subtle. May the Schwartz be with you! <laughs> something subtle, but, like... Like, uh, don't have it like Star Lord is interacting with Han Solo. Don't. No, 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 no. Don't. That's too big. That's like. Also, Harrison Ford would put Star Lord to shame. So like, yeah, why really. Would you even do that. To like, Star Lord uh sees himself as this legendary outlaw, but Han Solo is his legendary smuggler. Like, he's he's intimidated by Thor. He has no chance against Indiana Jones. Really, like, um, but however, it would. Honestly, I could see a, a MCU crossover with Star Wars being a dope ass thing. Honestly, if it was animated, right? I feel like they should do like a comic thing, yeah, more than like an yeah, MCU literally, thing. yeah, a comic. Because uh, Marvel, they they publish Star Wars comics. So here's another random question I had though that I was just thinking about, and I tried to find out. The answer, but I couldn't. Like, I looked on... I tried to look on YouTube, I tried to Google it, I tried to look on some Wikipedia pages, I couldn't find it. But, um, was John Walker blipped away during the snap? Mm, like, I, I, I personally have no, have no clue. I don't think he mentions that he was if ever... If anybody can find the, the episode, list of the but... snap people, let me know if he's on that list, because I don't know. But the reason I say that is because Carly Morgenthau... Yeah. She brought up, she said a line in the new episode, something about um, putting the same assholes in power. Yeah, literally. That, uh, they care they more. Played, now, after. Yeah, she said that they care more about the people that came back than the people that never left. So yeah. that got me wondering if John Walker was blipped, because maybe, like, that's why he got thrusted into the new cap position when he came back. Because maybe someone else was being groomed for it. But then he came back, and they're like, oh, well, yeah, he's definitely better. You know, screw you. Maybe maybe that Flag Smasher guy was supposed to be the new Cap or something. Maybe. I don't... Or I, even Carly. That'd be kind of cool. A female Captain America? Yeah, yeah, I doubt they would do that. I mean, we are getting a what if with Peggy Carter, where she becomes... Well, well she gets If she got the Super with, Soldier yeah, Serum? Yeah. Holy crap. Can you imagine just a buff Peggy? Yeah, yo, you know, yo, you remember her reaction... <laughs> seeing Steve coming out, she's like, <laughs> "That was real." Yeah, I know that. Like, that was a blooper. Yeah, I know. Uh, they were gonna cut it out. They're like, "No, why would you cut it. that out? That's gold." Yeah, uh, but imagine, but imagine Steve's reaction of her coming out like, oh, <laughs> "Booba, she's <laughs> got a better six pack than me." <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Another random question, because actually, first of all, I can't really ask this question. We got to talk about someone. Who was introduced in this new episode, the OG Black Captain America, Isaiah Bradley himself. Oh, yeah. And, like, this is a double-edged sword topic for me because I would really love to see some flashback scenes of him ripping yeah. Bucky's arm off or just his life in general, what he did as being Cap. But also, like, he's been in prison for 30 years, so I know that he's had a hard life, and if we get any flashback scenes... It's not going to be pretty. We might. Like, I definitely do want to see flashback scenes. But um, if you recall back to the episode, uh, when they leave his house or whatever, and the police stop him or whatever because they're arguing or whatever, and then they take uh, Bucky in the custody because he missed his I actually thing. like that scene. Um, And then you see Sam looking back at the house like, I'll be back later. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's not over. 
Like, so, they can do some shit where, yes, it would be dope to see the flashbacks of Isaiah ripping his arm off, or his metal arm, because it was... I'm yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah, it was his metal arm. Um, but, um, it would also be dope if his, uh, is it his nephew or son? It's his grandson, his Eli grandson. Bradley. It would be cool if Elijah Bradley came into play and not necessarily became a, he- a hero in this show, but yeah, I doubt. No that. doubt, he's gonna be, he's gonna be part of the Young Avengers. He lineup. might have a little part in the show, though. He All right, might, yeah. I was kind of I kind of brought this up to you earlier, but I didn't want to say too much without us talking in front of the fans. But I know that in the comics, Eli Bradley, the gr- grandson yeah. of Black Captain America, he, like you said, he becomes Patriot and he joins the Young Avengers. But he doesn't actually have any superpowers. Yeah, so does he get injected with uh, soldier, super so soldier serum? Or? Isaiah Bradley has um, his daughter, which is Eli's mom, before he goes into the super soldier program. So her yeah. blood is normal. So no, he doesn't have any blood, super soldier blood running through him. But what he did is he uses illegal mutant growth hormones. The yeah. MGH pills. He uses them and he gets like some temporary effects that mimic the super soldier serum. And um, those pills, fun fact, those pills were created by Dr. Henry McCoy, aka the Beast from X-Men. So if they if Eli's using those pills in this show, there could be a little connection to the X-Men. Yeah, definitely. Um But dude. I have a bigger conspiracy. I'm not sure how exactly they could be connected, but what if Eli wants to be a hero like his grandfather, but he resents the fact that he doesn't have his blood, so he uses those growth hormone pills. Maybe John Walker, because I've seen videos of people speculating that he's already a super soldier, or he's not. Me, personally, I don't think he is yet. I think he's going to be, but I I don't think he's got super soldier powers yet. But maybe he does. Maybe he's using those MGH pills as like a little bit of a steroid. Maybe it just wore off during that fight, and that's why he jumped and was so good at the beginning and pushed her down with the shield, and then him and Hoskins got, you know, thrown off the back of the truck as well. Yeah. So maybe he's kind of mad that he's like, oh, I can't get the effect to last. Like, I'm not as good as Steve, you know? Maybe that'll be a pushing force for him. But maybe Eli and him get together and he, uh, he shows Eli these pills like, hey, you can join me if you help me. You can, I'll make you a hero too, you know? Like, try to get him to work with John. Yeah. I could definitely, I could definitely see that. But then again, I could definitely see some shit going down where Isaiah steps in like, yeah, no, this ain't happening. You're not Captain America. Fuck off. True. Um, and uh, and literally, well, I Eli could go the opposite way and be like, "No, knowing my grandfather's history, I want no part of this. I don't want to be yeah, a hero like, like that. Are you kidding me? I'm like glad they, I don't they could, have like that. they could just play it off as like he's just a, he's just Isaiah's grandson, and then they right. do nothing with him, but. Event, uh, like eventually down the line, there could be an event that happens, and it's like, okay, maybe I should step in and help. Right? Maybe I should help these other young heroes. Maybe they find out about Isaiah Bradley, and they go to capture him. John Walker and Hoskins come, and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna take his blood, and that's how we're gonna we're gonna do a blood transfusion and get his powers that way, because that is how." Eli gets his powers. He gets some blood, basically, like how Bruce Banner and She-Hulk, same yeah. thing. So maybe they kidnap his grandfather, and he's like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I, I could definitely see some dickheaded shit going down like that, because John Walker, so far in the show, he he's too cocky. Stop he's the table, man. too arrogant. Um, He's, he's not Steve Rogers. He's no. Just not, no, no. He's not by a long shot. Just by the ending... Then stay the hell out of my way. Yeah, exactly. I, oh, really, dude? Fuck you. Straight up, fuck you. And Metal 
middle finger. And I'm and I'm really hoping they uh I'm really hoping Sam and Bucky just end up beating his ass and taking the <laughs> shield back because in the trailers we do see them or Falcon with the shield after that first. I'm episode, really so. kind of wondering how that's all going to play out if they're just going to like steal the shield from him or not because they they talked about it but then they decided not to instead they were going to go see Zemo. Yeah. Um, so like. I'm not really sure where that's going. And um, speaking of uh, another character, uh, they they mentioned uh, Sharon Carter mm-hmm, stealing mm-hmm. Uh, stealing their equipment back to give it to them during Civil War. Um, and then we've seen the trailer footage of her like being hostile towards them or, or something like that. I don't know. I um, don't see that. Uh, well, there's a part where like she's like straight up shooting at someone. I don't know if it is necessarily I doubt it's them. Sam, but if it is, uh, do you think it would be because they did steal the shield back and like Sharon Carter, by rights, has to follow the government's because she no longer is an agent of Shield because Shield is shut down. I didn't think about it like that, honestly. I was just going to use the easy way out and just say that if she was going to do that, and maybe because she's a scroll who's working with John. Uh, this this whole scroll I don't, I don't thing, think, dude. I don't think Sharon would like go against. I mean, I'm pretty sure she trusts Sam and Bucky. I, I'm like, you never know, though. You're right. You're right. Um, but okay. But if she is a scroll, I automatically. Me personally, I think that's a cop out because, like, every since right, they introduced right. the scrolls in Captain everybody's Marvel, a scroll. Everybody, everybody. Robert Downey Jr. He's not a, or Iron Man. He's not actually dead. That was a but, scroll. But Zach, um, so not actually, in the comics, U.S. Agent John Walker, fake, yeah, fake off brand cap, whatever you want to call him, um, he has more than one partner actually. Instead of just Lamar Hoskins, Battlestar, there's actually he has three of them. They're a group, and they dress up as like uh Cap. Well, basically, like, Cap's mask, pants, no shirt, like, wrestling. Jesus. And then they go around causing trouble for uh, John Walker to come stop. Like, they they make fake crimes so then he can come and, like, thwart their plans and make himself look better. Look like a better hero. So, uh, Quentin Beck status? Yeah. From Far From Home? Yes. As I know that he did use some sorcery uh, to, like, summon the elementals or whatever. Yeah. No, no, no. They weren't. It was all fake. It was just drones. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was no. So source. like, it was just all. So that's what I'm saying. Like Quentin Dexter is like, oh hey, we're gonna do the, we're gonna pretend that this didn't happen, right? And then me defeat it. So I'm, I don't know. Do you think that the flag smashers are working with John? Like maybe he just kind of took that beating to make it look good. Like maybe that's why he showed up there. I mean. Because maybe, maybe they're like, hey, we'll steal these vaccines, which are actually super soldier serum, not medicine, and we'll give you some, John Walker, if you, you know, help us get away with it. Now that you mentioned that, I could definitely see that being a plot in the show, because in that interview, or not in that interview, um, in the scene, like during the scene where uh, Bucky and Sam are sitting in the back of the truck with Lamar and... yeah. Uh, he was like, I'm not trying to beat Steve. I'm not trying to replace him. But maybe that's just him Oops, trying sorry. to get them to be on his side or whatever. And then him go behind their back. I'm like, yeah, you know what I said? Yeah, it was complete bullshit. Right. Speaking of complete bullshit, don't you think that... Don't you personally think he's a super soldier, you said? You think he has powers? I... John Walker, I definitely think, has Super Soldier Serum in him, uh, in him, because it like during the interview, in the beginning of the episode with Good Morning America, it shows him deflecting the shield off of targets. There is no way he was able to do that immediately. Honestly, like literally, uh, because the episode takes place, like I would assume maybe a day or two after the first episode. It can't be that. It can't be that long. Or maybe immediately after. Who knows? No, no, no. That's what I mean. I think you're right. A couple of days. It can't be late. Too, yeah. Too much. But there's no way he learned how to deflect the shield off of targets. Why are we so quick days. to not assume that they didn't just make another shield, though? I mean, it's the exact same shield that Steve gave Is it, Sam. Is it? 
The design, yes. No, I get that the, the design is the same, but where did that design come from? Uh, where did the new shield come from? I can't remember after it got broke in uh, uh, Endgame. From uh, Steve going to return the stones, and then he came back with it as old Cap. Did he? Yes. Yes. I thought he left with the hammer and the shield. So no. the, Okay, so then he just got that from history? Yeah. Where did he get that shield from? Uh, I don't know. And we don't, necessarily, we don't necessarily know if it's made out of vibranium either. Right. Anyway, that's my point. Like, Wakanda's open now. The government could have totally made another shield and let John Walker practice with it. Because, like, clearly if they have toys being made and they have this whole school band playing that star-spangled man with a plan, that had to be practiced. So, like... But then again... This is this is this was a plan. If they thing. if they had another shield, then why didn't John Walker's Captain America be introduced before Sam gave the shield to them? That's very true. Because maybe they wanted Sam to resign first, like they didn't want him to fight. Maybe it's like, oh, if we can get him to give up, then we can just enact our plan. And what's he going to do? He gave it up. Which you, you know, you are right. Though. He, yeah, like. Rhodey in the first episode definitely I definitely agree with Rhodey like why'd you give up the shield I have a question yo because okay that's great that you brought that up Rhodey do you think that he is involved in giving John Walker the shield no my heart wants to say no because I want to believe Rhodey's a good guy but based on that conversation he was really pushing for like well someone's gotta have that shield you know well, I mean, someone does have to have that shield, but... I do think he wanted Rhodey, Sam to have it, but if Sam's not going to have it, he's like, all right, then, we got we to gotta do something. I don't think Rhodey was involved in John getting the shield, specifically due to the fact that he was on his... He was on Sam's ass about him giving the shield up to begin with. And, and at the end of the conversation, Sam even says, uh, I did what Steve does. I did what thought was... I did what I thought was right. Yeah. <clears throat> like right. there like there are a lot of things that Captain America does in throughout the MCU where he thinks is right. Like the Sokovia Accords, he didn't sign that because he thought it was the right thing to do because I saw a lot of hold on, your mic cord. I saw a lot of videos about people talking about um like they think he could have done it as a race thing. Maybe we're going to see something that happened off camera in a flashback that like someone discriminated against him trying to be the new cap. So he's like, all right, well, you know, they're not going to fight for me the way that I'm going to fight for them if I'm cap. So I just can't do it. Nah, just take it. You know, like this just needs to be ended because no one else can do justice the way no, no one's going to be accepted the way they accepted Steve. Maybe that scene in the trailer where we see uh, Sam throwing the shield and it like lunges into the tree or whatever. Yeah. What Now that you say that, what if that's a flashback? Right, exactly, where he's training with it. Because, like, it's clear that he doesn't have it. Not, I think at the end of the show, he's going to become Cap. I think that's what's destined to happen. But, um, another thing, though. But he's not going to... When, when are we going to see him practicing with it, based on how the show is going? Yeah. Like, maybe, maybe he, um, becomes... Uh, Captain America in the next hope MCU so. project that uh, he appears in. Maybe. Um, I could, honestly... Because I think that John Walker is definitely going to be demoted from Cap and he's going to return or become U.S. agent <laughs> moving forward. Maybe he'll be, like, a part of some Thunderbolts team or something like that. Something. Um, but, um, another thing, um, since I mentioned Rhodey, do you think he's going to appear again in the show? Yeah, yeah, I think Rhodey's going to appear again. Um, do you think it's just going to be him, or do you think he's going to pull out the War Machine armor? Um, well, what reason would he have to pull out the War Machine armor? Maybe, maybe uh, Sam and Bucky ask him for help in retrieving the shield, if that is the case, or maybe they ask him for help. In I don't think he's going to do that, because he signed the Okovia Accord, so it's pretty clear that he's on the I government mean, he, side. I mean, he signed it, yes, but... Uh, this is also, what, six, seven years after that? I don't know how long it's been since uh, uh, Civil War. Uh, Civil War is like 
uh, two years before Infinity War or whatever, and then five year pa five years pass, and then uh, either way, it's been like six or seven years since the Sokovia Accords. Um, so like yes, they did sign it, um, but let's be honest, um, he was probably against it. But, uh, like, honestly, I could definitely see the, uh, a case where Brody signed it because Tony did. Like, if, like, if Tony's stepping up to try to do the right thing, then, like, well, Brody's like, that's my best friend, let's follow him. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, I think we're definitely gonna see him again. This is not the end of Don Cheadle in this series. We're gonna, and, gonna but, show and then again. again, think of, um, Infinity War when Rhodey was on a call on um, on a call with uh um General Ross or Thaddeus Ross is is he is he still technically a general? Thunderbolt at this Ross. Point? Yeah. No, I thought I think he's the Secretary of State now. Um and um when uh Ross told Rhodey to arrest him, uh and he says all over it, he straight up hangs up on Ross, doesn't do anything. So that right there well, right. Like, is him, quote unquote, betraying the government or not following orders or. Well, I mean, that I was know. just a very, very stupid order. Yeah. Um, cause let's be honest. If oh you my tried, God, my phone is just like. If he tried to rest. Fucking buzzing. The mic, I can't find a good place to put my phone where it's not. Uh, cause if he tried to rest, let's be honest. If he tried arresting them, uh, and they were to put up a fight, let's be honest, Rhodey would be on the ground. Yeah. Because it's Captain America, uh, Black Widow, and then an injured uh, Vision with Scarlet. So. Wait, Scarlet. What? when is Vision injured? Uh, when they go rescue him. Because he gets stabbed by, uh, what's his face from the Black Order? Oh, okay, okay. I see what you're talking about now. Yeah, but that's not hard for him to heal that. He did that pretty easily. Yeah. But, um... But, uh, let's stop talking about the first episode. We talked about the first episode last week. Um, let's bring up more shit from the second episode. Um, Alright, so, the reason... Okay, so, we went off on that whole tangent because I said something about Eli Bradley. Yeah. Now, I'm actually kind of glad that you said the Young Avengers because that's totally coming. Yeah. Like, now we have Eli, we have Kate Bishop, gonna be Hawkeye, we have Cassie Lang, that's three... We have uh, Wiccan and Speed. Do uh, that's five. Do we count Peter as a young Avenger? I think we could. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think he's, I mean, he's an Avenger he'd now. He'd be the older. He'd be part of the older right. bunch of the young. But Avengers. But then you have but. Peter, so that's six good candidates. Uh, because we have scrolls, you, they could always end up bringing in Hulkling. Yeah, Hulkling's a scroll. Yeah, Hulkling's a scroll, but he's just like a jacked. I, I don't know if I have a picture. I'll have to show um, you. And then who else? Uh, um, Kang the Conqueror is coming in Ant-Man, and a young version of him, Iron Lad, travels back to the past because he finds out he becomes Kang in the future, and he's like, no bueno, I don't want to be a bad guy. So he goes back to the past and actually tries to go find Isaiah Bradley, or I think he tries to find his son, who's also a superhero, and I can't remember his name. It's something along the lines of Patriot, but it's not that, because that's his grandson. But anyway, he ends up finding Patriot, and then Patriot pretends that he has powers, even though he doesn't, so he uses those hormone pills, and he's like, oh yeah, I'm a super soldier. And then he joins the Young Avengers with Iron Lad, um, and he like question. leads the Young Avengers. Do we know how old Monica is? Monica who? Rambo. Um, is she like in her 30s? I, I want to think so, because she was in Captain Marvel, and that was... That what, was in 90s? the 80s. Okay, and she was a little girl. So she's in 30, like early to mid-30s. Even if it was in 1990, that'd be 2000. 2000 by, by 2020, she's 30, and it's like 2024. Yeah. So yeah, she's definitely like 34 or some shit. But, um... What the hell, phone? Yo, Stop this. Oh is, my god, is it yours? What is going on? I really don't know. But if so, fucking Christ. Stop buzzing, like fuck. Oh, is that 90? I don't need to charge anymore. Like, fucking Christ. Um, 
But um, what was I saying? Um, what were you saying? Uh, uh, oh, Monica Rambo. Um, yes, I was gonna um see if oh maybe uh maybe she could uh pot, like I don't know, not necessarily be the leader of the Young Avengers, but since she is a newer character. Possibly. Uh, Possibly. I could see her being a leader figure for the Young Avengers. Or we don't really know how old um, Eli Bradley is. Or how old Wiccan and Speed are going to be when they come back. Eli, uh, he seems like maybe 16, 17. Cassie Lang and Kate Bishop. I don't know how old they're going to be. So really, I mean, I don't know. Any of them. You don't know who's going to be the leader. Yeah, really. Um, I kind of feel like Peter Parker's going to be. Honestly. He's got that Tony Stark mantle. Yeah. And he's already been. And not only that. Age doesn't really matter. Like, we have leaders that, like, in America, we have leaders that are vary from a wide variety of ages. So. Right, right. Um, but, um, so, my biggest question, like, to all of this Young Avengers stuff is because we have Wiccan and Speed introduced in WandaVision, because we have Eli being introduced in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and we know that the Hawkeye show, um, the She-Hulk show, are going. they're going to be Disney Plus shows. So yeah. they seem to be introducing all of the Young Avengers characters in Disney Plus shows. So do you think that they're just going to come out with a Young Avengers Disney Plus show? Or do you think they're actually going to make a movie out of it? Like maybe they have all the little shows connect and then we get this crossover event movie. Yeah, I definitely see it being a movie over a show because usually in these big crossover events, a big thing happens that is not like you know. Like yeah, these Disney Plus shows uh, within the MCU, they're movie budgets, but this crossover event is gonna have to be longer than forty fifty minutes. Well, right. That's why there'd be episodes to the show. Yeah, I know. Or with the actual no, Young I, Avengers team, that could no be a one, show that honestly, you could have multiple seasons of. I don't. I personally don't feel like there could be a show. I feel like p- fans would not like that as much because imagine if the first Avengers movie. Imagine if we got that in like five or six episodes. I personally would not like the idea of that. Well, I mean, I don't know. It depends. They're introducing all the characters in Disney Plus shows, so maybe. Well. Yeah, but... Because how far are they going to go? Like, are they going to make it to where you have to watch the Disney Plus shows to know what's going on in the MCU? Or are they just going to make it where you can just technically skip the shows and watch the MCU and roughly not miss it? They definitely said some stuff like that. Like, like in WandaVision, there wasn't much that happened. There really wasn't, but it sets up shit in future movies. That's my point. Like, so are they making it to where... If you watch the Disney Plus shows, you'll notice Easter eggs, and you're like, "Oh my god, yeah, I got that from yeah, WandaVision. You'll you'll, you'll have a movie. better you'll have a better understanding, of course. Uh, and the way that they're make like the way that they announce the shows, I don't know if they necessarily said it, but someone said that you don't necessarily have to watch the shows to get what's going on. Well, right, but just because but, someone said that doesn't mean I believe it's from Marvel. Yeah, exactly. I don't remember if it is from Marvel or not. But that's also a thing, though. Like, if they're introducing new characters, I think you're going to have to watch the show because, like, the She-Hulk show comes out. Imagine you don't watch that show. You completely forget about the show. And then you see her in an Avengers show. I'm like, uh, when did Jennifer Walters get introduced? Right, exactly. Or Moon Knight. Like, where did where did uh, Mark Spector come from? <laughs> he has so many different identities. Like, it's all in oh, a way... Down, you in a way, I feel like you definitely have to watch the shows because the TVA I uh, and Loki. I feel like they're gonna be a bigger threat than just a show, right? I don't know. And, I'm and, gonna and, watch and, all of it. It's Marvel. I'm here yeah, for the ride. Like literally, we have Disney Plus. Oh yeah, why not like, watch? I'm the watching shows? all of it. Like, um, actually, TVA. I don't see them really being as much of a threat. I just feel they're just. They're not a threat, really. They're yeah, they're just an like, they're just an agency guardians. that's like trying to like hey, they protect timelines. Hey, shit. you're you're like out of your timeline. You need to get back there, right? Like with Loki, because he wasn't supposed to take the Tesseract and dip. He was supposed to get. He was supposed to go back up to Asgard, and that be that. 
and then the events of Thor the Dark World would uh, happen. So, right. Uh, but I didn't. But in this new timeline, that didn't happen. And he, oh, I know, um, speaking of Loki, he, uh, like the episodes, um, like he's going to do some shit uh, where that involves real life conspiracies. Like, uh, D.B. Like, Cooper. Yeah, like the plane, uh, like the plane heist thing. Uh huh. People can't identify the person who actually did it. Uh, but the MCU is making Loki be that guy that did mm-hmm. the plane heist. Um, why not, man? Why? Yeah, really. Like he. Like, There's also a girl Loki. Some people are yeah. thinking that it was Black Widow, but it's not. It's yeah, just a that, Loki. yeah, that shot in the trailer. If you remember, it literally looked like Black Widow and her yeah. like Avengers get up, like the first one. I think that was kind of the point, like, to mess with us a little bit. Yeah, like, like um, Ralph Boner joke. Like, I thought she was dead. Is she doing a Loki? Ralph Boner. Can we stop talking about Ralph Boner? <laughs> <laughs> I hate that they brought Evan Peters just for a dick joke. Anyway, speaking of Ralph Boner. <laughs> no, so, um, now that we're on, like, sort of a funny subject, though, I have another question about Bucky. I love that scene. Where he was like, or where Sam goes, they're probably one of the big three. Yeah, really. Androids, aliens, or wizards. Wizards don't exist. Or uh, what about sorcerers? Dr. Strange? Uh, Doctor Strange is a sorcerer. Yeah, sorcerers are wizards without a hat. <laughs> you like that? I just came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> but, <clears throat> dude, the way Bucky flexed on him, where he was like, "I know Gandalf. I read The Hobbit." In when it first came out, when it first came out, I think that's the year. I'm not even sure. No, but, yeah, he said nineteen thirty-seven. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I think it actually came out in like Europe in nineteen thirty-seven. It didn't officially come out in the U.S. until nineteen thirty-eight. But I don't okay, really know. I'm, I'm looking this up right now, guys. But um, the way he said that, like, flexed on him so hard, like, ah, uh, yeah, I read it when it first came out. You plebeian. Is he, like, that makes me think he's a, a little bit more of a hardcore nerd than we think. Or at least he used to be before he was the Winter Soldier. Because, like, you don't just, I mean, that he was pretty defensive, you know? Yeah, really. So it makes me wonder, what else does Bucky like pop culture-wise? I need to look into that in the comics. Does it explain? Yeah. Like, maybe he needs another little book like Steve had about stuff to look up when he came out of the, the ice. The Hobbit came out September 21st. 1937. Okay, all right. Honestly, though, that that makes me quite uh, that makes me wonder. Um, so you remember in um the Winter Soldier, uh, when Sam um suggests something for Steve, and then you see him pull out his notebook and he yeah. has a bunch of like, um, Bucky needs one. <laughs> yeah, Bucky needs one. Uh, because like there was noticeable stuff like uh like Steve had Star Wars written down. Uh, the Beatles. Um, Bucky really needs some furniture. Yeah, that this man just stays on sitting and, on the floor. Yo, he has a couch, but he sleeps on the floor. Does he have a couch? I didn't see that. I, I'm pretty sure he wakes up laying next to a couch, or maybe it's a chair. No, I thought it or was maybe, a table. May, I thought it, it was like an end table because I believe be. he's got like a coffee table on the one wall, and then like on the opposite wall is. Another coffee, like, or I mean, no, he's got a coffee table with his TV on the one wall, and then directly opposite from that is another little square coffee table that he was sitting next to watching but, um, fake off brand Captain America. Oh, and um, also, I just realized he probably can't afford uh, furniture because, um, uh, well, let's see. How does he have a TV then? He, I mean, they probably did some work, just bought a TV or something. I don't know. But, um, if you don't have furniture, you really think Bucky cares about TV? Uh, I mean, he might. Maybe I don't know. Like maybe, maybe he uh, checked out the uh, the Hobbit movie that came <laughs> out in 2012. Another another funny Bucky moment from this episode is when they get into that fight on top of the uh, on top of the two trucks, and then Carly Morgenthau just like jumps up, grabs Red Wing, and just bam right over her knee. I've always wanted to do that. Yes. Oh my god. But that's also another thing. Now I've always wanted to do that. Now Sam, if he if he wanted to, he could like as obviously he knows how to repair Red Wing. Do you think he would be able to manufacture his own Red Wing so that 
that, uh, like, obviously it would still, I feel like it would still technically be government property, but do you think he would make his own so that the government can... I think he should make his own so they don't hack it again. Yeah, like, uh, what you, cause, um... But I don't John, know if he's smart enough to, like, his stuff is, is Star, Star Trek, technology. Yes. So he didn't make it, but he does know how to repair it. A little and bit. And honestly, repairing could definitely go a long way. You could definitely learn how shit is made. Right. If you right. know how to repair it. Um but uh but yeah, John like uh it's government property. Uh we were able to track you through it. Like, uh, okay, dickhead. Yeah, and that's also how you knew that Lamar threw that line, oh, one of the big three. Yeah, really. Like, oh, that's not like, super obvious. Like, Thank you. Like, yo, bro, why are you listening to all my conversation? Fuck off. I really hope we do get to see some more of Isaiah Bradley's story, though, because, like, yeah. that'd be really nice to see some flashbacks of his cool adventures as Captain America. But, um, but yeah, speaking of Isaiah Bradley, I remember seeing a thumbnail on YouTube before I saw the, um, saw the episode. And honestly, part of it kind of looked CGI, so I couldn't tell if it was real or not. Well, I'm sure it probably is. Because I don't think the actor that's playing him is really that old. Probably not, no. Um, but um, but I remember seeing it, and I'm like, uh, is that the Black Captain America in the thumbnail? Like, the fuck? Yes. Um, as so soon as I saw it, he was like, we're going to go see it. When they name-dropped Isaiah, I knew. I knew what it was. Yeah. Oh, more points on John Walker being a dick. Uh, like you said earlier, uh, about the line of him saying, telling Bucky and Sam like, to stay, stay the hell out of my way. Like, uh, that is not a Captain America. Uh, no. He, like I said, uh, he's too cocky, too arrogant. That gun, that gun shooting, one of the Flag Smashers? Yeah. Uh, this isn't World War II Captain America. Right. Like. He used a gun in World War II because he was fighting Nazis that were trying to shoot him. Yeah, like... But none of these people were armed, so why are you shooting them? That's just... Honestly, right. that kind of seems like a coward. Yeah. Coward's way out. But I feel like he did do that to be a cocky asshole. Because think about yeah, it. Well, he, he was he, right there. Yo, he even he like, could have shot Bucky, but he was like, yo. Let he me even, just gangster. He, yeah, he even like angled his shot to right. where it wouldn't hit Lamar either. Right, like he shot that guy just to like, show off his shooting skills. Like, bro, I think I that's what it. that was. You you work in the U.S. Army, yo, bro, I get yo, it, bro. but yo, yo. I'm Master Prestige on Call of Duty, but bam Bro, no <laughs> way. Yo, I got, I got diamond on all my guns, mastery, unlock, everything. <laughs> but I think that's just another point of him being a cocky douche. Yeah, like literally, that is not our Captain America. I honestly, I would prefer him as U.S. agent because U.S. agent uh, is a more. Then he could be that cocky guy, and I'd be more okay with it. Yeah, I'd be more okay with it. But he's taking the mantle of Captain America, and I am not all right with that. No, you you can't spit on that. You have to really hold that in high regard. Like honestly, you, you... though, Bucky is kind of shaping up to be a good Cap successor. Yeah, honestly, if he could just get his get his shit together, he'd be he could. I think he could do it. I definitely feel like uh, maybe if that one scene of him throwing the shield in the tree wasn't a flashback, uh, maybe he was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna just give it to Bucky. Like, he deserves the shield. He was there with Steve during World War II. Right, but there's very good reasons why Steve didn't give it to Bucky. He's mentally yeah. not there yet. But he's um, coming along. And way. there's also a theory that in an alternate timeline, he does become Captain America. He does become the successor. To well, Steve. I mean, he does in the comics. So yeah, and I guess like, in the multiverse of madness, like, maybe we see Bucky like, Cap come maybe out. Maybe that was a uh, part of the timeline of Steve going back and being with Peggy, living his life. Mm. Maybe he retires as Captain America. Like, hey, Bucky, here you go, dude. I want to live my life. I want to I wanna have a family, you know? Right, because that wouldn't be the what-if timeline where she gets the serum, because then it would just be the opposite. She'd probably die and wouldn't get to live. Yeah. I didn't think about that. That would be interesting. Because, literally... I feel like the reason they did that, honestly, is so they can, some point in the future, go back and make a movie about it. Where yeah. we get to see him live out his life. Yeah, because I... you are not telling me that Steve Rogers went back and just idly watched everything happen in the I, MCU without doing anything. I definitely anything. want to see at least a show. 
like call like Stephen Peggy or right. something like, like that. Like he wasn't Captain America, but I think he definitely could have been Nomad or something and done a little, a, a, a couple yeah. of things. Like really, that is honestly, I, I I wouldn't see it being a rom com, but that's a rom com that I would thoroughly enjoy. Like, I mean, didn't we sort of get that with Agent Carter? Not that I, I don't, watched the show. I don't. That's not really a rom com because that's. Uh, that show takes place after uh, Captain America uh, like takes the plane on uh, like crashes the plane on ice or whatever. Yeah. So I don't really see that being a rom com in a way. Uh, like I obviously, I think I think they do identify that show as tend to the MCU. Um, no, it's not. Um, but you know, um. And I definitely did, like, Howard definitely seems like he is into Peggy during the events of yep, that show. Yep. Uh, but obviously he doesn't get with her. Um, or maybe he does get with her, then they break up, like, you're you're not, like, you're not Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you're not the, he, you don't have as big as pecs as Steve does. Um, <laughs> you cannot satisfy my needs. But, um, I don't know. Uh, but, like, if they did, if they seriously did a rom-com, like, a serious rom-com, not something like WandaVision. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I pers- I liked it, obviously, I liked it For too. what it was, yeah, it was great. Um, but I would actually sit down and watch that show because people, this is something people want to know. Like, what went down. Honestly, if they tell me it's MCU canon, I'm watching it. Yeah. Because I have to know. Or I ha like... Even if it's something that I don't like, uh, like Throw the Dark World, that's not my favorite movie. That's my least favorite MCU movie. But you gotta watch it at least once. Like, like I watch it during, like I, like I just watched it when I was rewatching the movies in chronological order because yeah. there's shit that happens in there. Like the Reality Stone that gets introduced in Throw the Dark World. My bad. Like. If you don't watch that movie, then, oh, where'd the reality stone come from? Right, yeah. So it's like, you have to watch everything in the MCU, because it all connects in some way. Yeah, like, even even if someone says, like, eh, you don't really gotta watch this show. No, you but do. Like, you but, do. like, how, how does... But, like, you do. Where does Jennifer Walters come into play? I don't remember when she right. was introduced, bro. Uh-huh. But, yo, where did Isaiah Bradley come from, bro? Where did Elijah Bradley... I don't know. Speaking of the Bradleys again, do you find it weird that like all the racial stuff that happened in the show happened in their neighborhood? Because like, yeah, I honest, I get what they were trying to do, but why would you make all the racism stuff happen in the black neighborhood? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yo, and that one cop, yo, that one cop that didn't recognize uh, Sam with his goggles, he's racist. <laughs> I didn't recognize you without the goggles. Oh, like, the, the like, goggles? The, like the one police officer's like, uh, these are Avengers. Right. Um, oh, my bad. I didn't recognize without you. Oh, uh, I didn't recognize you without the goggles. And I'm like, uh, okay. That scene to me, I actually really liked it. Not because of the racism. That's not why I liked it. But like, it seemed kind of clowny to me. Like, they kind of just, like, they happened to come around the street and patrol, and then they saw them arguing, Yeah, and then they just automatically blame Sam because he's the black guy, so why not? He has to be the bad guy, of course. Yeah. It just seemed, like, really overplayed, and, like, it was kind of bad writing or acting. But I actually think that that's, they did that on purpose. Because, like, I think it's the opposite. I think... They did it on purpose to make fun of how stupid everybody is in real life with this racism stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, this is like, the, yeah, um, the MCU is basically saying, look, this is how you yeah. guys act. This is how stupid you guys are. The writer and director, he actually is someone that, uh, like, like deals with racism in a way in like all of his projects. Like, um, mm -hmm. like he, uh, the writer and director, I don't remember his name, um, but he actually worked on Empire. You remember that show? Yes. Uh, that, I actually watched the first season of that show. That show's not bad. Uh, but it stars uh, the dude who... War Machine? Yeah, it stars the dude that played Rhodey in the Terrence first... Terrence Howard. Iron. Yeah. Um, that, but yeah, no, that show wasn't bad. Um, but uh, speaking of that neighborhood, though, uh, 
honestly, my favorite bit of that whole episode was, uh, like, yo, it's Black Falcon. And I'm like, no, it's I just the it. Falcon. Uh, Do I call you Black Kid? Like, I so, got him. So what are you, like, Black Kid? Uh, I got him. Like, that, that bit was actually hilarious. Um, <laughs> the staring contest was hilarious. Yeah. Oh, oh, you want to be, be close? Really? How yo, close, yo, how close yo, do you want to get? Yo, like, yo. Yo, fine. We're really, we're, we're we're really locked in now. Oh yeah, we're really locked in like, now. Yeah, you want to get close? But you want to get personal? Let's get personal, dog. You're definitely not touching my gonads with no, your totally. No, totally. No, no. <laughs> you, you obviously couldn't see what was happening, but we were doing what they were doing uh, that the therapist session. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yeah no uh, that was i don't know i love it i love the comedy that they just throw yeah in there. It, it it's definitely also though about that scene like that almost i'm not gonna lie that almost made me cry that scene yeah because Sam... bucky just looked at him and was like if steve gave it to you and you gave it up and he was wrong about you then maybe he was wrong about me and you just like it really shows you like oh okay so bucky's really mad that you gave up the shield because like now he thinks that he can't redeem himself for being the winter soldier yeah um which you know uh like obviously like you can still redeem yourself for something that like that because like well first of all that wasn't him like he was being controlled by hydra right uh like and you, you might not be able to redeem yourself as quickly but through time that you could redeem yourself. and Like, yeah. Isaiah was like, you just can't wake up one day and choose who you're gonna be. But yeah. I think you, I mean, you can. It's not quite that simple, like you said, but you you can change. Like, there is definitely, like... You definitely change. Like, at, like right now, Bucky and Sam, they're in a... Uh, they're in a state where, like, they don't really want to work together, but they have no choice to. Right. Uh, and I could see some shit That's playing where, like, at, by the end of the show, they're, they're gonna be buddies. It's gonna be this buddy cop show that me <laughs> and my buddy Jaden theorized it was gonna be. Uh, yep. and, yeah. Like, and that it, could be cool, because this show could have the potential for a season two. Which, I would love for WandaVision to get a season two, but... Nah, I don't. I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening either. Like, uh, I'm really it, interested to see where it goes, though. Yeah, because like I really like how they were getting into some of Bucky's mental issues. I like when they show that side in the superheroes because it's like you realize that they can give powers to crazy people. Like that's how supervillains happen. And the only difference between a superhero and a supervillain is which side of the moral line you're on, really. Yeah, really. I don't. It just makes me excited for Moon Knight because that's another. That's another guy yeah. who's insane, uh, like Deadpool. Yeah, that'd be just. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Uh, if um, and yeah. I really hope they do his mental health justice in that show, like showing that, because that's another example of um, including people representation. There you Rep go. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um. But in the comics, uh, Moon Knight, he works with characters that we know and love, like uh, like Captain America and Wolverine or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and they're gonna they're introducing the mutants eventually in the MCU. Um, uh, and it'd be cool, um, like if they do mutants before Moon Knight, but Wolverine isn't there just yet, or like the post credit scene for that movie could be. Uh, them like going to find Wolverine or some shit, True. and then we get the Moon Knight show, and there's like an episode where Moon Knight works with Wolverine. Like, hey, what up? Or I don't know, something like that. Uh, because um, there's uh, the mutants. Um, there's a theory that I really like about uh the snap activating people's X gene. Oh yeah. Uh, I. Like the radiation I, from the snap. Yeah, How I it? really dig that theory because mutants haven't been introduced throughout the MCU just yet. And now, if they introduce the mutants, they're gonna have to like either fill in the blanks where like they weren't in. Like, oh yeah, no, we were always here, but we, right. we just didn't get involved. Uh, but it was, honestly, no, I don't like that. It would make more sense if the mutants started coming after. Uh, Banner brought everyone back. Right. Uh, it obviously affects them. Like, 
like Henry uh, McCoy. Uh, the beast. He, yeah, the beast. He could, like literally the radiation from the snaps because there were three of them on Earth. Remind, uh, remind you. Yes. Um, the original, the one that brought him back, and then the one that killed Thanos. Yeah, exactly. So like, you're telling me three snaps on Earth, and will technically not four act- in the universe. Yeah, there's a fourth one on uh, whatever what, planet he made. Yeah, whatever uh, planet Titan Thanos 2.0 or whatever went the hell to. Uh, so like we could see mutants. Uh, we could, mutants could definitely be introduced like that. It's not exactly comic canon, but like but this what the MCU. is fully comic canon from the MCU. Um, nothing. And really. then we could see a mutant or two come from space. Yes. However, that will. However, that will. Happen. Honestly, I don't think we're gonna get a big mutant explanation yeah. until the Eternals, because yeah. they are really what like what made the evolutions. In humans possible and for that to happen. Speaking of the Eternals, uh, there was a blog that Marvel released or whatever saying that the Eternals, like the events of Endgame, leads up to the Eternals. Mm, yeah, I could see that. So because the Celestial is like, who yeah. is who is messing with this power? And then and then uh, on uh, New Rockstars uh, during an episode of uh, Rogue Theory, um, one of them said that. Uh, the Eternals villains is a group called the Deviants, and the Deviants yep. could just be mutants. Thanos is a Deviant. Yeah. He's technically an Eternal that had the Deviant side, the and that's Deviant why he gene, looks yeah. like a purple ball sack. <laughs> but, uh, that could Daddy also Thin be Thin. another way, that could also be another way that they introduce mutants. And, True. um, and it could be Or some... Terrigen Mist, they could still introduce mutants in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. I don't, I don't see that really I don't, happening, though. I don't really see the mutants being, like... Mutant seems like a movie-level event. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, hey, you know this group? Yeah. Uh... Like, the, if anything, maybe we'll get some hints in Black Widow? Like, um, Flag Smasher, what was he? He was just a guy. He didn't really have any powers, He was just a guy? Think. Okay. I think he ended up getting some powers, maybe from Power Broker, I'm not 100% sure, but he was just a normal guy. Okay, so... Yeah, he yeah, was a guy. He yeah. wasn't a group. He was just a guy. So yeah, in in, in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the Flag Smashers is this group of uh, like people that disagree with how the government is running things and doesn't approve of how like they're how they care more about the people that returned from the blip than the people that didn't. Um, Honestly, like. I'm kind of confused about the Flag Smashers. Because in the first episode, we saw him rob a bank. Yeah. And then in the second episode, the guy that, like, they went to his house, he was, uh, he said that people were starting to call him, call Carly Robin Hood. But Robin Hood steals from the rich and gives to the poor. So does that mean that they're seen as good people? And does that also mean that they were stealing from some rich dude in the Swiss bank? So, like... Is that bank robber scene gonna... Was that them stealing from the power broker as well, and now they're really making enemies? Like, Or maybe that's a different guy that they stole from, and I now they just created a new villain that we're gonna see later. If you remember, uh, one of the members of the Flag Smasher uh, gets a text saying, I will find you and I will kill you. Well, yeah, that was the power broker after they took the, yeah, that the vaccines on the like, it, it wasn't like identified <laughs> who vaccine. it was, but... That could be the power broker, and whoever the power broker might be, probably know it could be Zemo. But I don't. They think don't reveal. It's Zemo. They don't. They probably won't reveal. That I personally like end. Eric Voss's uh, Zola train idea. I think Zola would be a better fit for the power broker than Zemo because why would Zemo want to? He wouldn't make super powered beings. He wants to get rid of them. Yeah. Or if anything, Thunderbolt Ross could be the power broker. Yeah, but I also don't see a don't... text saying, I will find you and I will kill you. That doesn't seem like an Arnim Zola thing. Right. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. It because, doesn't seem like a Ross thing. Uh, Because, honestly, I feel like if Arnim Zola was involved, I feel like he would like show up on the phone like after he hacked it, like looking like his AI self from like the Winter Soldier or whatever. Yeah. Like, And then him saying his German accent, like, say that but in but a that more... would give away too much maybe he doesn't want to give away that he's back maybe yeah. he wants them to think it's the power broker and they don't really know that it's it's him possibly um 
Or it could just be the government. It could. I doubt that. Because uh, the one guy that sacrificed himself, uh, that knocked down the uh, yeah. the telephone pole or whatever, I don't think we get a clear shot of who actually arrived. That was pretty was... stupid, honestly. Yeah. Like, what did you even do by running and getting shot like that? They were waiting for you for him to run and then just immediately gunned him down. He could have just tried to run to the plane. Yeah, I don't. Or he could have just pushed the He could have just pushed that down. The pole and down and then ran. booked it back yeah. to the plane. Like he would have been still alive. It would have literally he, he, accomplished the same probably, thing. Probably he's probably um irrelevant, but Wow, you're just calling Carly's people irrelevant? You're the reason that she's doing this. Yeah, bro. You You're know. the assholes in power that she's talking no, no, about. I'm saying his character, though. It like he didn't really seem like the main person we care about is Carly. So, well, right. Like, but everyone else, we don't really know their names. We don't know their backstories. A lot of people are confused about Aaron Kellerman's character, Carly Morgenthau, because like, is she just a gender swapped Carl Morgenthau, or is she Carl's son or daughter? Yes, yeah, son. Is she Carl's daughter? Uh, I don't... I feel like it's more of a gender swap thing. Me too. Because they, they do that all the time with in the MCU, like the ancient one. The ancient one's actually male. Carly... I used to kind of be weirded out when they would do shit like that, but now I totally get it. Because it's like, all of the old characters are just white men, so you, you yeah. have to switch it up to... Like, imagine, imagine you know, the MCU... Uh, or imagine that first Avengers movie, and uh, imagine if it, a Black Widow was actually a dude. Well, I mean, okay, there's some characters that are women, but it's like no, not, I know, but not as many as the all creepy. white men. Like, imagine the MCU if uh, Nick Fury was the uh, white dude that he appeared to be in the comics back in the day. I could, I could still see him being a badass. But the, Samuel oh, yeah, no, Jackson, definitely, still. but Samuel Jackson. The is, fact that he got made into Nick. Fury before he got made into Nick Fury just proves how dope he is. Yeah, like Samuel L. Jackson is just this badass figure that like come on. The man the man was Mace Windu. Literally George Lucas like, yo, what color lightsaber do you want? Purple. And it got it. Wait, really? That's why his lightsaber was purple? He wanted a purple lightsaber and that's why he got it, because Samuel L. Jackson <laughs> is a badass. Wow, I didn't know that. Literally, he's the only one with a purple lightsaber in Star Wars, by the way. Nice. All right. Um. Well, what are your predictions for next episode? What do you think Zemo is going to be up to? Zemo, I don't know what he's going to be up per se, but I feel like he's either going to get uh, bailed out. Uh, maybe not bailed out, but like, I don't see... Uh, I don't see Cap uh, not Captain America. Fuck. John I don't Parker. see Steve or or not Steve. Why do I? I don't see Sam and Bucky breaking him out of jail because well, one of them works for the uh for the army or the government or whatever, mm -hmm. and the other is a civilian, and I'm sure he doesn't want to be arrested again or whatever. Right. For whatever reason, so I don't see them breaking him out. I see them maybe working a deal with Zemo. Maybe they end up working together for an episode or two, and then Zemo betrays them. And just He's definitely going to betray them. Because I He's saw yeah. one of the lines in one of the trailers was him talking, saying, uh, I will not leave my work unfinished, or something like that. Yeah. And then, so um, he's definitely planning something. And, then he, uh, and the way he got introduced with the chessboard... That he's definitely planning moves ahead. Then the actor who plays him posted on his Instagram a picture of his character, uh, uh, like his appearance, not with the mask, mm -hmm. but the caption was literally the um, the uh, like code words to mm -hmm. activate the Winter Soldier. So, um, do you think it, he's going to try to use those words again? I definitely feel like he's going to try to use those words, but not on Bucky. Well, who else? Would uh, like uh, the Flag Smashers, do we know who they are? No. Could they possibly other? Could they possibly be other Winter Soldiers? No, because all the Winter Soldiers were executed in Civil War, and they're all young. The Winter Soldiers would all be like eighty, even if they got frozen. They're too 
all the Flag Smashers are too young. Well, I'm not saying all of them are Winter Soldiers. I'm just saying maybe one or I two. I mean, could. maybe the one guy that has the mask that they but, thought um, was the leader in the beginning, maybe he has something to do with it, but I highly doubt it. And, for, I don't know, for all we know, like, maybe he will use it on Bucky, but... I feel like they wouldn't do that again, specifically. Well, he can't. Fact. Sure, he already wiped Bucky's mind. It's not gonna work. Oh yeah, no, it won't. Yeah, no, it won't work on Bucky. So yeah, I, I forgot about that. Um, but I feel like there might be, or maybe, um, I don't know. Uh, this might be a crackpot theory. Maybe he uses it on his uh, on Isaiah Bradley. Uh, because I don't know if he was necessarily part of the Winter Soldier program. That, I didn't think of, okay, alright, I like that idea. Because Bradley does say, you're, even your people weren't done with me. Oh, yeah, yep, yep. Honestly, how stupid, I'm sorry, but that was really stupid to me, when, like, Sam was like, your people or something, and Bucky was like, Hydra. Like, you really thought he meant white people? Why, first of all, he's in jail, clearly everybody running it is probably white people. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't understand why Sam would say that. Like, as soon or as he maybe, said, your or, people weren't done with me, I automatically thought of Hydra. Like, who else would he be talking yeah, about when really. he said your people? Like... That's the only thing I'm sort of, like... I, I, maybe I, Sam is I hope just show, playing dumb and, maybe. Uh, like, not fully understanding that he... I don't know. I don't know. I really hope the show just, like, is very careful on that line with the race stuff, because I like what they're doing about exploring it. Like, they really yeah. should call it out. Like, there doesn't need to be racism, and it's especially cool in the MCU to see it. But it's like, you're kind of doing too much stupid stuff, especially when, what was it, the first episode, where they were going for the bank loan, and he was like, uh, his sister called him extra or something, and he was like, you know, I don't play with those with these white people. Yeah. What was, what was the point of that? Um... Honestly, she was probably just annoyed and... Like, definitely... Well, no. He said it. Oh. Like, definitely make fun of us. I don't care. Like, white people are stupid, and especially all the racism stuff going on is retarded. But, like, just why... It just seems forced. Like, make it natural. Like, the cop scene, that seemed a little forced, but that was perfectly forced, because, like, that just seemed to call out how stupid we were. And I love Disney for that. That really calls out, uh like media that would play that would have like race like racism in their films constantly um and then just in real life like back like it still happens today but it happened a lot more back in like the 80s and 90s right but it's like i don't know i just don't want them to be too stupid with it and like you said of course that one scene would happen in a black neighborhood I don't get why, though. Like, if anything, wouldn't it be normal to see black people having a conversation on the street in a black neighborhood? Like, wouldn't you think as soon as they get outside the neighborhood, maybe the cops show up? I don't know. But I get that it's a TV show, so they're pressed for time, so they got it, you know? Yeah. But I I don't know. It was a little weird. But I still liked it, nonetheless. And honestly, they probably did it like that so that we could see Sam looking back at Isaiah's house like, I'll be back. I'll be back. Oh, for sure. He has to come back because I'm pretty sure he's going to talk with Isaiah and Isaiah is probably going to be one of the people that's like, yo man, you need to, you need to take that shield and you need to show them exactly why you deserve to be Captain America. Yeah, really. Um, but yeah, no, like I said, I could definitely see, uh, Zemo trying to use them keywords or whatever the, Whatever the wording is, yeah, on Isaiah, and then that would be cool. That that maybe be not those specific keywords. It's probably a different set. That yeah, Zemo maybe knows. maybe there's a different set that, or actually, for each probably one. not Zemo. He probably knows it, but he didn't make it. He wouldn't be that old. He just knows yeah. it from the research. Yeah, because um, he that uh, would be cool for Civil him War. to unleash Isaiah. Like, maybe that's why they kept him locked up, because they were like, oh, well, he's too unstable, you know, if someone gets a hold of him. Yeah. Um, also, because they didn't want anybody to know. But, um, like I said, other than that, that's I don't really theory. know I, I don't really know what they're going to do with Zemo. Obviously, he has a role to play in the show. They wouldn't advertise him in the right. show. Like, uh, 
and I can't wait to see it. Like, literally, like, the main characters that they did show in the trailer, they all have roles in the show. Well, duh. Like, that that used to be stupid. Like, um, like, say, like, WandaVision. Like, say the trailer shows, like, uh, Agnes. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just a nosy neighbor. I might actually act as that. We all smelt that from a mile away. Yeah. Um, Everybody knew. Oh, you know, okay, speaking of that. I kind of think Marvel is, like, purposely not doing what Netflix does and dropping the whole season at once. Because they're I, I actually... Prefer that. I prefer that I not think, dropping that whole well, season at once. Me too. But I think they're doing it so that they can edit the season as it goes along. So they can see how we react within the first couple days to a new episode I, drop. And I, then they can edit it to, like, make shit fit better into certain places. Because we already know they did that with WandaVision. They, because they had a scene where uh, Senior Scratchy actually did turn into a beast and try to mess with someone. So mm -hmm. that just proves that he's not actually the devil. He was her familiar, like her pet. Mm -hmm. But because it wasn't in the show, he could actually be Mephisto. So watch out, guys. Uh, I could definitely see that, but I don't see. I definitely don't see them doing like reshoots of scenes. Like that's just no. Well, no. I think they have a bunch of different versions. Yeah, and they're gonna cut it together depending yeah, no, on they, how they want the story um, to continue. And not only that, like people that worked on MCU projects straight up said that there are several scripts for well yeah but that's just because of leaks like tom holland and mark ruffalo well no not only that but um like some cases like with dr strange too um where they straight up said that multiple screenwriters have multiple scripts and they and then mc uh kevin feige looks them over or some shit yeah but and, once they get to shooting stage they're only going off of yeah. one script yeah no, obviously, and uh, and then obviously, like uh, actors, uh, they um, I can't think of the word, but like they uh, like add their own shit in, uh, like improv, a, improv. They Im improvise a line in or or two, yeah. And then if it's good, they keep it. If it's not, like yeah, yeah, no, we don't, we don't need that, right? Cut. <laughs> All right, man. Speaking of cut. I think that pretty much wraps up the episode, right? Um, we definitely, uh, yeah, we definitely talked about the key things that happened in the episode. Some not so key parts, but right. Is but, there anything else you think we missed? Um, we talked about the beginning. Uh, we talked about uh the Zemo Isaiah. We talked about the ending with Zemo. Um. Oh, okay. Here's one thing I forgot. John Walker and Lamar Hoskins. As I told you, there were actually three partners that John Walker had. Yeah. Now, they were called the, uh, was it the Battle Urban Commandos? Something like that. They were called Bucks, basically, and there were three of them. One oh, of them yeah. got promoted. They, yeah. John uh, Hoskins. They were John called, Hoskins. like, Buckies or some yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, Lamar Hoskins got promoted to Battlestar, uh, yeah. John Walker's second in command. The other two, Bucky's, got jealous of that, and they actually became foes of John Walker and him. I think they were called like left ring, left winger and right winger, or something like that. They had like red and white on their costume, yeah. like opposite, like so when they stand next to each other, you know. But um. So what I think maybe we could get a flashback of John Walker. Maybe we're going to see those two people come into it. Yeah. Maybe they're working with the power broker or something and they're giving like information about John Walker. I could. Yeah, I could see that. Or they could just like not do anything with them at all because they just introduced Lamar without them. Yeah. Cause they literally introduced John. They introduced Lamar. They, also, uh, that was a little weird because there was this whole story arc in the comics of where john walker like he became you know cap and then somebody released his identity and because of that it led to his parents death john walker yes it led to john walker's parents death so then he just straight up goes on a killing spree and just murdered the people that did it and then he murdered left ring left winger and right winger because like they were a part of it i think so he just like that's why he ends up losing the cap yeah, title and becoming, becoming u.s, US agent, agent because yeah. they were like well we can't 
Cap can't do that. I mean, you can still work for us because you're a badass, but, like, Cap can't, doesn't represent that. But they just show him only footage of his World War II days. <laughs> but we already know that John Walker is Cap because, I mean, like, they announced it on the football field. Like, this is or, John Walker. He's Captain America. So I don't yeah. think they're going with that storyline because, like, or what is there to lose? Everybody Cap already knows. John Walker is the new Captain America, dot, 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 for now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But, like, everybody already knows who John Walker is, so I can't yeah. see them doing it that way. Yeah. The, but maybe his other partners are going to come into it somehow. Possibly. You never know. We don't know how the show is going to go until the episode's released, so... Very true. Unless, uh, you know, people are leaking episodes, which I hope not. I will I will find you. They I are. I will kill you. There are some leaks, and I, yeah. I watch all of them. Damn. Be- only because I don't, I don't take it to heart unless it's something from marvel so like if people call it a leak and they're like oh yeah we have details about the next episode i'll watch it because how do you know they're not talking out of their ass i mean they might be but i don't i don't watch leaks uh just in case it is true and i'm like oh well i already know this because i watched this video about this leak right but until it happens on the screen i refuse to believe that it's canon and we have to see it so i watch everything plus i like to know where stuff could be headed because, um, oh, I can't remember who it was, but I was watching a YouTube video and they were talking about the power broker and they said that it's kind of weird because the power broker is actually like a pretty low level type of villain. Yeah. So he doesn't have many stories. So he even said in the video, he didn't want to, uh, oh, it's screen crush, I think. Yeah. And he said that he didn't want to tell me about the power broker because if we know about that story, then I mean, that's basically what they're going to be doing. In yeah. the show, so based on that, I want to go learn about the power broker so I can see what his story is. So then I can see, oh, okay, well, how how are they going to adapt that to fit what's going on so far? Yeah, there's um, if, if so, next if episode power I will broker, definitely know about the power broker. If power broker isn't featured in many comics, then it's obviously. But also, the power broker was two different people in the comics. And for all we know, he could be a totally different person in the MCU. Yeah. They, so they might not even use that. They story. could definitely do They could that. do whatever they, they want. Yeah. They, they've changed a lot. They've changed a lot of details about certain characters, what they do, their origin, whatever. Oh, yeah. They, they do that a lot in the MCU. But, you know, they best would probably do that to modernize the stories in a way. Yeah. Well, before we skedaddle. We wanted to say something to you guys. We are trying to be more interactive, and we want to introduce a new bit here on the podcast. We need you guys to give us random words. In an effort to expand our vocabulary here on Geek Speak, we want to do a random word of the day. So we need your guys' help. We need you to comment down below. Give us random words. Some obscure words, some hard words, maybe some long ones. Tell us the definition, tell us the word, leave us a comment, and then we will randomly pick one every week and shout you out. You can give us a comment, a word, the dictionary definition of the word, and then if you want to, if you have a podcast or a YouTube channel or any social media, if you want to leave a link there, we will shout it out. And promote you on our channel for you helping us by giving us a word. And then hopefully, maybe, if we get any comments, we can actually do it next week. Indeed. Now, the whole reason that you guys are going to want to do this is because hopefully, if we get your guys' submissions and we get some words, what we want to do is get your guys' words, submissions, so then we can use them. And we can have a little fun here. We want to play a random word for you guys at the beginning of the episode. And then you guys have to spot out or shout out when Zach uses the word and when I use the word. And if you guys can correctly give us the time codes, the first comment that correctly shows when that we say the word. That is unedited. Yes. You can edit your comments. Well, yeah, but we'll be seeing the first. We'll see the comment anyway. So yeah. you better not mess up. Or you better comment again. Don't edit the comment. Just comment again. Yeah, if you have to, comment a second, third, fourth time, whatever. But yes, the whole point of that is if 
You comment now, give us words. If your word is picked, we will shout you out next episode. And you even have a chance to win again, because if you can be the first person to tell us when we correctly use those words, then uh, you'll you'll win a little something something. And we're not exactly sure what that is yet. We're not yet, exactly sure but what yet. But we'll take your ideas for that as well. What do you guys want? Yeah, literally. Within reason. Within, within reason. reason. Within, like. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, that's all for episode two. We are the Geeks That Speak, and we are signing off.